hello. Uh, first, I wanted to tell you, uh, you can't uh, automatically check if code is good. Uh, and I will tell you, I will tell you uh, uh, what we can do. Uh, this is Code Quality in Python. My name is Radosław Gancharek. And uh, let me tell you a bit about math. math. Uh, are there any uh, mathematicians here? Okay, no. Okay, so <laughs> we'll go fast on that. Uh, so there's a theorem called Rice theorem in math that uh, has some very uh, obscure uh, definition, but in short words, in words that normal human can uh, actually comprehend, it means that uh, we can't automatically verify if a program uh, has some non-trivial property. So, uh, for example, we can't write a dictionary when you will uh, check if your program is correct. So you, can, you, you can't get a dictionary when you will search for your program, and oh, my, my web application is right here, it's correct, all good. Uh, you can't write uh, such dictionary. Uh, you also can't automatically verify if program never fails, if program returns some, returns some data, if it, if it is well written, whichever it means, or the WTF factor. Uh, because uh, uh, because uh, mm, you, can't, uh, you can't do this. Uh, but you can try. In fact, all we, all we do is try. Uh, with all our automated tools, we have uh, we are just uh, simplifying this task uh, by adding some boundaries and some 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 limits, so that this task is easier. Yeah. So don't worry; it might have been uh, harsh, but it's going to be okay. Uh, we can we can do s some things uh, to check if program is good. Uh, okay, so uh, I will int introduce you to many tools that uh, I use, or at least tried, uh, about uh, uh, tools that are used for checking or uh, checking uh, programs in Python, or making them look more uh, more beautiful, like formatters, import sorters, and uh, also a bit of the code coverage. Uh, there's a small uh, summary of what is this talk going to be about. Uh, are there any managers here? No mathematicians, no managers. Oh. I don't get you. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, that's 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 right. So I will I will be talking about developers' perspective. Uh, so how do we uh, can use the uh, these tools, how we can improve our code uh, with using them, because of course managers like charts, like the uh, percents, and uh, like to see that they grow or drop uh, in some cases. Uh, but we, we developers, uh, are more uh, are more practical. We want to see how it uh, how it changes our code. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so here is a graph of uh, of various checkers. You probably, or you don't, uh, you probably know all of them, or nearly all, all, all of them. There was a talk about Radon uh, yesterday. Uh, yes, and so this graph presents how uh, how they uh, how these checkers are uh, contained in in each other, meaning that a checker that contains other is checking what this this smaller checks, uh, yeah. So uh, now we see that we have one big checker, PyLama, and small uh, smaller ones. I will talk about all of them. Uh, okay, so let's start with Pep8. Who doesn't know Pep8? Raise your hand. Oh, that's bad. But but probably you are not programmers. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Pep8 is. Uh, a Python standard for uh, how code looks. So it's just about how code more or less of looking and using proper idioms than of the mm, semantics. Uh, so Pep8 is is a checker that in most cases you can you you can afford conforming this all all these rules. There are no rules that you 
will find difficult to uh, to, to uh, use. Uh, yes. So, so that's a style checker. That's the must-have of all the uh, in, in in most cases. Uh, yeah. So next one is PyFlex. PyFlex is uh, it's it's a small checker, in a, even smaller with pep8, but it checks many uh, many uh, nice uh, things that uh, you would uh, usually use PyInt to, but PyFlex is faster. It's checking for unused variables, unused imports. So if you have a guy that, uh, when he's creating a new module, he's copying the wall of imports from another file, uh, you, can, uh, you can check it with PyFlex and <laughs> actually uh, give him PyFlex and say, hey, remove these imports. Uh, okay, next is uh, McCabe. Uh, this is very, very small tool. It's just uh, checking the complexity of uh, functions. And what you see here on the, on the screenshot, on the shell shot, in fact, uh, are the uh, uh, complexity for, for, for functions. Uh, and uh, you just assume which level, which level of, uh, of complexity is okay for you. Uh, for example, here we have 18 uh, level of complexity, so that's very, very bad. Okay, and Radon. Radon is uh, like on this uh, on this graph, a bit off of the whole uh, uh, ecosystem because Radon is Radon is more like a metrics tool, so a tool for managers and tool to see the big picture of the project. And uh, so, if we are going to look if overall the project is doing good or doing bad, we will use Radon. But uh, I think it's no use using it uh, every day. Uh, yeah, but it also uh, counts the, the McCabe uh, uh, score and, 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 and other metrics. Uh, okay, I told about PEP8 and PyFlex, and here is Flake8, uh, which incorporates PEP8, PyFlex, and, and, and McCabe. Uh, so this is a tool that, uh, in most cases, it's, it's, it's enough to use it if you don't if you uh, have dirty things in your code base. I will talk on this later. Uh, Flake 8 is also like PEP 8 is a tool that in most cases it will, it will be okay to follow all these rules. And, and here's come PyLint. Here comes PyLint. Who doesn't know PyLint? Okay. So PyLint is a tool for uh, analyzing Python code for a bit uh, more, in, in a bit more, mm, there are m many more uh, violations checked, just not not just the PEP8 or, or something like this. There are lots of lots of things that PyLint uh, checks. PyLint is very thorough, and and that's uh, its blessing and the curse. Because if you are, for example, creating a class and later importing it via some import D magic or something like that, PyLint will not like it. If you have uh, a class that that uh, generates its field, it uh, its fields, PyLint will not like it. Will say will say that field is is not defined in the class. Why are you using it? And you are using it because you know it's well, because you know uh, this field this field is there. So PyLint is a is a tool that you can't just. Uh, and just use without configuration. You will always need some configuration. There are, there are uh, modules to uh, ignore some uh, common uh, some common things that happen in Django and Flask. Uh, yeah, but but Pilot is also very uh, very useful because uh, it also points some uh, places where you need to refactor something, where the function is too long or uh, class has too many public methods, which just si or or has no uh, public meth methods, with, which in fact should not be allowed. Class needs to mm, present some interface, and piling is pointing it out. It sometimes is re is relevant, sometimes not, but always uh, gives something to uh, gives something to to think about. So I recommend piling, and here is pylama. Pylama, uh, as it was showed on the shown on the graph. It just gets all the checkers that, that I was uh, talking about and runs them. And uh, 
Yeah, and PyLama, PyLama it's, it's easy to think that, wow, we'll just install PyLama and it will do it all. But uh, if you want to configure uh, all, the, all these tools, if you want to install some extensions to them, and uh, you, want, you want to have some specific settings, it's difficult. You have one big configuration file, which for someone, for some people, is would be good, and, but for some people would be a hell to uh, to edit it and search for some things. I personally like smallest tools I, I can I can actually have, uh, with the example of Flake 8, because PyFlakes is not as big to 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 to, to be treated as as a fully uh, separate tool and. PEP8 and PyFlakes are integrated very tightly. Uh, okay, so there are also other tools. What uh, the tools I wa were talking uh, uh, earlier were a classic uh, tool uh, tools for static analysis of Python code, but here are some other tools you can uh, you can enjoy. Uh, PEP2557. Uh, is like the like like the document PEP. 257 is checking uh, if, val if uh, your doc strings are valid. So it's very uh, it's very thorough. You can see it's going to uh, say that you don't have a point. Uh, sorry, a full stop on the end of the sentence, and uh, and many and many other and and uh, enforce that uh, the summary line should be one. In fact, one line and uh, and many other things. So. PyLint only only tells that the docstring is missing, but if you want to be a docstring Nazi, uh, PEP 2.257 is something for you. Okay, uh, Vulture. This tool checks for dead code, for code that is not used, and uh, and as I said uh, when, when I was talking about PyLint, PyLint, it can always fall in a trap uh, of a class that is defined but used by some magic or uh, some attributes that are set with uh, with magic methods. Uh, so with Vulture, you need to be extra careful because uh, it doesn't have many configuration options. So you just can't uh, ignore uh, all the things you don't, uh, you, you you know will fail. Uh, it's just uh, between between art and science, uh, checking which which functions are really not used and which are used, but it's not obvious. Uh, so I recommend, but uh, you need to uh, you you can't follow it blindly because it will it will uh, it will not uh, end well. Uh, and last of the additional tools is iSort. iSort in in its uh, default uh, mode uh, sorts the imports in all of the files he can find, uh, but he can uh, but it can also check for imports. Uh, check if the imports are are well sorted. Uh, yeah, that's not very meaningful. But if you want more meaningful uh, results, you can install a plugin for Flake 8, which makes some real uh, hints how to how to sort imports. Mm, okay, I, and to some of these tools, you can write extensions. In Flake 8, is all it's uh, mm, okay. It's also it, it's. Uh, mm, Usually, it's, a, an, it's an extension with another check for doc strings, for imports. In PyLint, it's, it's uh, uh, usually something that makes some uh, project spe uh, specific changes, like for Django, Flask, and, uh, and so on. And to PyLama, you can add new checkers. Uh, and uh, when, when writing an extension, you can choose uh, either to uh, write, uh, to uh, analyze raw code, or abstract syntax tree. Who doesn't know what are abstract syntax trees? Okay, so when uh, when you have a Python program uh, and this program is parsed and uh, the word, the special words in this program are changed into tokens, and this to and from these tokens you form a, an abstract syntax tree, like uh, abstract syntax tree with if under under this node is the the, the logic value the, the the command for then and so so it just uh, uh, is, is the program it's, it's your program in the in the purest uh, in the purest form and you can see here uh, an example it's the code for the, the the most relevant part of code for the McCabe extension to Flake 8 
so we can see that it just uh, retrieves the graph and uh, goes goes on this uh, IST graph uh, by by every node, checking some uh, thing. It uh, in fact here here it's simple because gr the uh, path graph AST visitor gives the complexity uh, function, so it's it's here it, it just counts mm, counts the max complexity. Okay, so next next thing, formatters. So if you don't if you are lazy and what you want your code to look beautiful, uh, you don't code Python because <laughs> Python yeah Python requires you to uh, work with all these white spaces and if you are not respecting it you are not coding Python in fact so yeah but there are some some tools that are to help but they are no but they won't do all the job uh, uh, that you should do the first of them is autopep autopep I don't recommend because how you can see there uh, it uh, it fixes it fixes pep8 violations, not all of them, but uh, leaves very ugly uh, line breaks. So uh, not it's 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 not that unless you want to uh, uh, to check and uh, and repair after it. Uh, yap yap is a rather new project from from Google, and uh, in in the in the docs you can you can read that. YAP is meant. It's, not, it's also not meant to do all job for you, but uh, it's uh, it's meant to unify the style uh, among whole company. Uh, for example, they um, they told that they, they they wrote in fact that you can uh, add a pre-push uh, hook that will format your code with YAP, so that the format on the master branch is always formatted the same way. Even if you have your personal pr preferences, YAP will do it uh, its way. And I sort, I was already talking about it, it sorts imports. Okay, next next uh, thing, uh, test, test coverage. Uh, who doesn't know what is test coverage? Okay, test coverage, it's about that you run all the tests and uh, in the meantime, you check which lines in your code were uh, executed so that you will you can be sure that all the all, all your code is executed uh, coverage is a module that you can use also in other uh, in other uh, cases for example uh, if you are if you are if you are running your application just to see if the if the code is used but uh, its most common uh, use case is just for testing and uh, the common use case for using coverage is that you uh, check coverage on your branch, if you are working on branches on Git, uh, for example, and uh, you compare this to the to the coverage on the master branch, so that you don't uh, don't do uh, worse than it was uh, before. One thing to remember about coverage is that uh, the mo the extensions to nose tests or pytest with coverage. Uh, Sometimes don't uh, don't have the good results, and uh, near the end of the, of the presentation will be shown a better way of running coverage. It it, it should be just run before uh, before the the uh, actual test runner, or just run test runner inside the coverage, not the other way. Okay, and other articles that you can use uh, div cover and div quality. Uh, they are tools that are uh, running. Uh, diff, uh, you give diff cover and coverage XML file, and it checks e if there are some uh, missing lines on your branch, but only on your branch. And uh, diff quality works a bit, a bit the same. You give it a checker, uh, and it checks, uh, but shows the violations only on your branch. Uh, diff quality supports only a limited s set of checkers, but you can add new. Uh, they are not. Uh, it's not n now. It's not possible by extensions or or, on con or configuration, but maybe it will be in the future. Uh, okay, Gitlint is also a small tool like DiffCover, but smaller because it just it just runs PyLint uh, uh, on your on your branch compared to the master. And if you have a colleague that 
uh, leaves uh, orthographical mistakes in code. Uh, yeah, this tool, this tool is for you. You can check, you can check if, you're, if there are any errors in your code, like what we have here, uh, absolute, absolute, instead of absolute. Uh, yeah, so you can, you can catch, catch uh, these things. Okay, so a uh, couple of words about automation. Who doesn't know Tox? Okay, so if you don't know Tox, you want to know. Uh, because Tox, Tox is a marvelous tool for running, running tests and it handles its own uh, virtual ends. So uh, you just don't need to bother about anything, you just configure Tox and run it and, uh, and, it's, and it's done. Uh, you can also enjoy some plugins to PyTest that check PyLint. And what I recommend and what I use in my project, we have, uh, we, ca we are coding on GitHub and Jenkins has a plugin uh, to build uh, every pull request. In our case, it means that this plugin for every pull request is running the test, the PyLint, Flake8, and uh, if the results of tests, if the coverage is lower or if the PyLint fails, uh, the, uh, the, test, the pull request can be merged. So I recommend. However, however, you might not want to run Jenkins because it's, it's Java software, it's big, and it's consuming all the RAM it is, it is given. So maybe you can use Travis or another uh, CI tool. Okay, and it's, it's an example of configuration of docs. Uh, you just, uh, you just uh, give what, what Python versions you, you need to check against, and you write commands. Here we see just, it, it clearly that coverage run minus m knows, and uh, so it runs knows inside coverage. Uh, it, it generates XML, fetches the latest master, uh, and runs diff cover, diff quality. Uh, it's an example from the diff cover project. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. Uh, Okay, so a couple of words about why. <laughs> uh, I probably have one minute. Okay, but, uh, but in most of these cases, uh, you just want a uniform style. You just want, uh, you just want that uh, when you go to some module that nobody worked for a month and a man who worked on, the, on that leave the company, uh, <laughs> you want, when, when you go there, you want to uh, be in the, se in the uh, environment that you know, uh, and uh, ah, now now one minute, thank you. And uh, PyLint and, co and coverage and, and other tools give you that. Also, coverage uh, test coverage. If you have high test coverage, like 90% or or better, uh, it gives you uh, confidence to refactor. But because if you refactor and you and you break something. Uh, you will know about it because all the tests will run and they will say uh, what's wrong. Uh, okay, if you want to, if you don't have time to do this, you can go to managers with these buzzwords, so maintainability, readability, extendability, it, it's always better. Uh, predictability also, yes, yeah, so uh, to, as a recap, check your code, uh, run tests, run coverage, all you will find, all things will go terribly wrong. Uh, and are there any questions? We have time for two questions. One in the front, and then we'll go to the back. Wow, great. So, okay, uh, first of all, thanks for showing PyLama. Uh, it would be great, but the one point I'm missing from your presentation is uh, a sonar cube, and it's a plugin for Python. Uh, I, uh, well, uh, let's be silent about uh, checking rules it uses because it's, uh, it, it's its own custom Java implementation of uh, analyzing AST trees. Uh, but the cool thing about this is that uh, it uh, maintains a list of issues in your code. Yes, you that's, that's helpful, helpful. But uh, SonarCube is running o only PyLint. So, and a couple of custom checks, but uh, that's not enough, uh, at least for me. Yeah, you can use it, and y if you have enough RAM to run uh, SonarCube, yeah, go, go with it. 
uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice, it creates, it creates issues. If you actually want to have every violations as a separate issue, that's, that, that's the other thing. Okay, but I, I if, if I may, uh, it uh, wasn't actually my question yet, uh, so uh, I would like to ask you uh, if you know any other tools for, uh, I know, virtualizing or maintaining a list of issues that come from PyLama or other tools you mentioned. Mm. Because you said you, I bet you use uh, continuous integration and so on, so. Uh. In my current projects, we just uh, had a master, master job uh, on, on Jenkins. We checked master with all, uh, with all the rules we really want to be followed, enabled. And if someone has had some free time in the end of the sprint, uh, he, just, he, he just was, uh, was taking some of these rules and fixing them. Some of them also uh, required some serious uh, refactor, so you can you can f fix all the all the pylint uh, if sorry all the on all the pep eight and pyflake violation. For example, mm, I hope in, in in one day if it's not a gargantuic project, uh, but. Uh, for the for the more uh, severe refactors, you will need to uh, really uh, think of how to uh, w what needs to be done, and the uh, and the bug for this won't be just fix violations here and here because it might be a bit uh, a bit harder. Okay, thank you. There was one, one more question. Do you, okay. Yeah, my question is uh, if you have some good tip for enforcing uh, the rules in a team of five or more people without being too rigid uh, about, uh, about, for example, the piling rules and stuff like that. Mm. Without, without need for what, sorry? Uh. Without being too rigid, without having a uh, you know, push hook which refuses uh, the push. If you have some some other, because in my experience, that's like a big problem. You you have rules, but always you have people and circumstances and other problems. Which when you break the rules, so uh, if you have yeah. some good tip how to avoid that. Okay, my my approach was to uh, enable the rules that are checked, uh, not 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 all of them at once, but the ones that can be can be enabled, and uh, in. Oh, we, we weren't used. Uh, we weren't using Pylint and Flake 8 from the very beginning of the project. We, we just started using it from the core pep, uh, with the core Pep 8, and later we expanded with it with uh, consecutive rules from Flake 8 from Pylint, and uh, I think that's that's the path. That was my path, and it worked. People weren't uh, weren't angry uh, about this because. Uh, in general, uh, people are most angry when you make them fix someone else's mistakes. And with, if you have diff quality, diff cover, they will just uh, f need to fix the, uh, their own mistakes. So uh, if you don't, if you will, uh, if you will talk with them and tell that you are going this way, and they will agree, so it's 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 going to be okay, I think. Okay, thank you very much everyone. Thank you, Radislav.